Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the AI behavior tree task? Move directly toward. So let's go ahead. Let's run through this quick little example here. I'm actually going to have to show you the difference by using the move to node itself, and it should be pretty self-explanatory. So let's watch what happens when I have the move to player object node turned on. You'll notice it goes around my barrier and moves to my player. Now if we switch this to the move directly toward, you're going to notice a slight difference. It will literally move directly towards it. It will not use the AI path, it'll use the AI path finding to find a path, but it's not going to use it to avoid an obstacle. So as you notice, it's going to try to get to me regardless of the obstacle in the way. And of course now it's going to catch up. Nope, oh, there we go. I managed to avoid it. So there you go. That is what the move directly toward node does. So let's go ahead and go over the settings. So for our settings, we have our acceptable radius. This is something you need to keep in mind. The acceptable radius is basically how close to the destination does it have to be in order for it to be considered successful. When you're using a actor as the blackboard key, then this is fine to have a lower radius. It's in centimeters. But if you're using a location, the, player, the location of your target, if it's a, another pawn, for example, or your player, is more than likely going to be the origin or the center. It's not going to take into account the outside of it, the actual radius. So you need to usually make your acceptable radius much larger to take into account. So if you find that you're running a sequence, let's go ahead and let's lower this. Have our mesh back together. Let's go have move directly toward with a 5, moving to the player's location. And we run this. What we're going to see happen here is this sequence is going to run, but if you notice, it's never finishing. It's never going to trigger the next part. That's because the location it's trying to move to is in the middle of the player with a radius of 5 as the acceptable radius. And it went immediately when I move my character, you're going to notice it finish moving, and then it will now wait if we go over here. So that's something to keep in mind. You need to adjust your acceptable radius if you're using a location-based. If you're using a object-based, it's not usually too much of an issue. It takes the radius into account. So our next options are disable path update on goal location change. Basically, if the location changes, like for example, you saw I had the player object, and when it was chasing down the player object, it was continually updating the goal location. If you set this to true, it's not going to automatically adjust that if you have the actor or an actor as the location target. So if you want to continually pathfind, you would keep this unchecked. If you want to simply go to the location upon first starting, then you're going to want to check this. Project vector goal to navigation. Basically, this is just going to put the goal on the navigation mesh. You want to leave it as the default. Allow strafe. This is what allows the AI to strafe left or right as it's going towards you rather than rotating. If it's appropriate for your model, allow strafing. A spaceship, for example, would probably strafe. A person could probably strafe. They have the ability to shift left and right while moving. Something like a car more than likely would not be able to strafe. Stop on overlap is pretty simple. It goes along with using the player object or the location. Basically, the agent's radius will be added to the acceptable radius for purpose of checking. So my AI may be 100 for the radius, and if I have the stop on overlap set, it's going to add 100 to my 5 to give me 105 for my acceptable radius. So it'll take into account the size of your AI, and it's something to keep in mind if you want to design a universal AI with different sized meshes and different sized things it's going to be controlling. Your last one is your blackboard key. This one's important. It's either a location, which is going to be a vector, and it will move to that location directly, and that's when your radius comes into play, or object, which means it's going to use the object itself, which means it will take into account radiuses 
and you're not going to have too much of an overlap issue. Now the problem is it has to be an actor or a location. By default, objects are not actors, they are objects. You need to open up the advanced menu here under the key type and choose the base class as actor. If the base class is the default is none, you will find you cannot choose it as your Blackboard key. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want the actor to show up as a Blackboard key, make sure it's an actor class and then you can use it. That's it. That is what our move directly toward node does. It's basically just like the move to, but it's not going to use the navigation for obstacle avoidance. It's going to literally take a straight line and avoid any and not avoid any obstacles. And as you saw, it could be useful if you're trying to recreate some older games or effects, or maybe you want more of a less intelligent guard AI. You could have them move directly towards, and you could have your more intelligent ones use the actual move to with the navigation. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.